Hi everyone, in this video we are going to discuss proof of this theorem. Actually this theorem is a converse part of the last theorem, the theorem which we have seen in last video. So let us discuss the proof of this theorem. Let us try to understand what is a given thing. We have a matrix space XD. Suppose this is a matrix space XD, they have given one set A, which is a subset of X, right? They have given us, given us one sequence x1, x2, x3, x4, such sequence we have, all points of a sequence are points of A, all terms of a sequence are points of A, that sequence converges to point P, getting, and xn is not equal to P, that means all terms of a sequence are different from P. What we have to prove, we have to prove that P is a limit point of A. This thing we have to prove. Okay, so let us start with the given information. Let me write, we have a sequence Xn such that, I am writing the given information. The first information is Xn belongs to A. All terms of a sequence are points of A. Second information, xn not equal to p. That means all terms of a sequence are different from p. Third information, third and most important information that xn converges to p. And what we have to prove? We have to prove that p is a limit point of a. So I'm going to use this important information, convergent sequence. We are familiar with the definition of convergent sequence. Same definition I'm going to use. But at a place of epsilon, I'm going to write R. Okay, let us start. Let R greater than zero be given. See, tell me what is meaning of epsilon. So epsilon denotes a very small positive real number. So here R is also positive real number. So definitely we can replace epsilon by R. So by definition of convergent sequence, we can write there exist natural number n such that d of xn comma p less than r since at a place of epsilon we are using r for all n greater than or equal to capital n okay let us write the next part here so suppose we have a ball with center p and radius r so if i say distance of a from P is less than R, distance between A and P. There is some point A and its distance from P is less than its radius. That means definitely that point lies inside a ball. If distance from P is greater than radius, then point will lie outside a ball. Same situation we have here. Distance of Xn from P is less than radius, so we can say that point Xn belongs to ball with center P radius R for all n greater than or equal to capital N. Same thing I have written, but in terms of ball, okay? Now what will I do? Here we have said Xn not equal to P, all points of Xn are different from P. So that's why if you remove P, that means center of that ball, from that ball, then also we will have the same statement. So let me write, therefore, now from 2, xn not equal to p. So we can write xn belongs to p, b p r minus singleton p for all n greater than or equal to capital N. Since none of them is equal to P, so that's why if you remove P, if you remove that P, doesn't matter, we will have the same thing. The second thing is Xn belongs to A, getting Xn belongs to A. Xn belongs to that ball, Xn belongs to A, that means Xn lies in intersection also, right? Now, from 1, Xn belongs to ball with center P radius R minus singleton P intersection A for all N greater than or equal to capital N. See so here we have said Xn belongs to A. All terms of a sequence, okay, are from A. 
xn for all n greater than or equal to capital n xn belongs to this ball okay minus singleton p so that means xn lies in both sets with this condition n greater than or equal to capital n so we got this one but the most important thing its intersection is non empty since we are getting something from the intersection actually many points are there all xn belongs to p for all n greater than or equal to capital n so therefore that intersection is non empty getting is non empty not equal to phi let me write here let me remove this diagram now it is not required getting it is not equal to just a minute it is not equal to phi and see uh, we had taken r greater than 0 be given that means r is any arbitrary so it is true for every r greater than 0 every r greater than 0 right so see are you familiar with this definition so this is our definition of limit point so therefore we can declare therefore p is a limit point of a so in this way we proved that point p point p is a limit point of a so make a screenshot of it then we will stop thank you see you